batted in. He has 29 stolen bases. And he leads the National League in three base hits with 13. He also has 29 two base hits. So Samuel, an ideal leadoff batter, an extra base hitter against Good, and he's had only five hits and 34 at bats, batting 147. This year against the Mets, he's hitting 238. He's had 10 base hits, driving in two runs. Gooden with a record of 13 and four, and the fastball for ball one. I'm a little surprised Mel Thompson in the leading off and Samuel batting second. I think he's more suited to earlier in the batting order, like second or third, than Mel Thompson, a better leadoff hitter. Thompson with a lot of base hits, as you looked at him in the on-deck circle, and Samuel bounces one through, and he is on. So the Phillies have the first hit of the ball game. Number 24. Fastball, and Johnson has to play Samuel shallow. Howard plays a shallow third base for the most part anyway, but because of the threat of the bunt, that high hopper over the head of Johnson. The Phillies have 97 stolen bases, not too many, but the first two batters in the batting order with 29 and 41. Mel Thompson with 41, hitting 315. Thompson with seven home runs, 39 runs batted in. So Thompson, who has been a hot batter for the Phillies, and a throw to first base, Samuel back. Thompson has hit good and very well. Seven for 15, batting 467 against Dwight Gooden. He's had 30 infield hits, and that was probably the point that Tim was bringing up as a leadoff batter. Yep. He is a infield hit type hitter, has outstanding speed. And the first pitch by Gooden, his first curveball at strike one. In his last 34 games, Thompson has batted very well hitting 384 and there's his average against Dwight Gooden batting 300 against the Mets this year with 12 hits and the pitch back a fastball strike two also with Samuel and you, you know this is not a a real big point or a, a key point or anything like that but Samuel struck out 135 times this year Thompson only 70 times half as much so a two strike count crowd applauding for the strikeout and there goes the runner the pitch is taken strike three the throw is not in time and on the strikeout Samuel steals second base stolen base number 30 for Sammy this year and he really had a terrific lead fastball on the outside corner Thompson doesn't agree a good throw by Carter a little high but because of the lead Samuel had no way you're going to throw him out. So a runner in scoring position on the stolen base and with one man out the batter will be Vaughn Hayes. Hayes hitting 293 with 19 home runs 75 runs batted in. Hayes with 31 doubles. And the curveball for ball one. Von Hayes led the National League in two base hits last year. There are his stats for this year. Off to a slow start, has been hitting much better lately. Hitting 175 against the Mets this year with seven hits, one of them a home run. And the fastball for ball two. It's interesting to note as you see his career average against Gooden, how Samwell at second base stays outside the baselines and as the pitch is on its way, he moves into the baseline to maintain some mobility when the pitch is made. That's an old Mari Wills feet. He's way behind second. Look how far he is out of the base. And then he comes up into the baseline as the pitch is made. This ball blooped in the left field for a base hit. McReynolds has it. The throw home is in line, but not on time. And on the throw home, Von Hayes moves on down to second. So the Phillies get the lead as Hayes drives in the first run of the ball game. Where's your cutoff, man? What happened to Howard Johnson on that play? There was no cutoff, man, that I saw. We'll Here's see. This little looper. Number now, your third baseman on a ball hit to left field has got to be the cutoff, man. Johnson was there, but it was to his right. So McReynolds not hitting the cutoff, man. Had he hit the cutoff, man, you may prevent Hayes from going to second. Yeah, but his throw was on line. The cutoff man was not in line. No. Howard was really not lined up properly from the left field to home plate position. Hayes at second base. 
And the batter is Mike Schmidt. Schmidt hitting 300 for the year with 28 home runs, 93 RBIs. And a play on its second is close. But a safe call by second place umpire Jerry Crawford. And the third base coach usually checks the shortstop. Shortstop here is playing way over there in the hole, so he's no threat for a pickoff. Popped him up on the right side. Tim Tuffle in the outfield grass puts it away. Schmidt is out two down, and that'll bring up Lance Perry. From the ballpark, after the players had gotten their luggage, light rain falling at arrival time. Now the batter Parrish, and he takes for ball one. Parrish hitting 243 for the year with 15 home runs, 60 runs batted in. Check swing foul. It's one of one. Bruce Ruffin pitches tomorrow night for the Phils against Sid Fernandez for New York. Then on Wednesday night, Shane Raleigh and Rick Aguilera. Back home on Friday night at Veterans Stadium against the Buccos. Side with a curveball. Phillies manager Lee Elia. Phillies seven over the 500 mark under Lee with trainer Jeff Cooper there. Two balls and a strike to Lance Perry. Ball for a strike. It's two and two. Big old curve, and there's a lot of break to it, and it breaks quickly. Von Hayes at second base, two outs to run in. Phil's lead one nothing. Smothers the curveball foul to Shane Raleigh. Shaner's long arm will grab that ball. Pitcher's arms, Whitey. He sure, he sure has. And they hang down to his knees. Parrish has those blacksmith arms. Two balls and two strikes to Lance Parrish. Parrish hit a good and fastball way out of here. Philly's last time in here, so Dr. K will probably try to get him out with a deuce. No, fastball. Check swing. Full count. One of those uh, half swings we've seen these called occasionally, but not tonight. Tom Hallion is the first base umpire. Three and two to Parrish with two down. Hayes the runner at second. Curveball struck him out. Two K's in the inning for Dr. K, but the Phillies put one on the board on two hits. Well, Jelson Schmidt in the infield, Hughes, Thompson, and Wilson in the outfield. The catcher is Parrish. And the leadoff batter for the Mets, Mookie Wilson. Oh, baby, love that uh, sexy Tim McCarver. Don't you con don't I dare didn't say comment on that. <laughs> Watch it. And the <laughs> first pitch to Mookie. That Luke. banner is a little scary now. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody said it'd be easy. 
Mookie hitting 303, seven home runs, 30 runs batted in. And that pitch for ball two, two balls, no strikes. Mookie has hit in six straight games, batting 478 over the six games. In his last 20 games, he's batting 400, and he takes a strike two and one. That's as a team hitting 269, second in the National League. They're fourth in home runs with 164. And it's popped up. Samuel, the second baseman, moving back. And he makes the play as Thompson pulls off. So Mookie is out, one away. Phillies leading one nothing, and the batter will be Tim Tuffle. Tuffle hitting 333 for the year. He has 10 home runs, 44 runs batted in. And in his last 13 games, he's batting 375. In his last 16 games, he's hitting 350. Carmen, at one time, a relief pitcher. He made 119 relief appearances before he got his first game start. That was back in 86. And a strike call. Last year, he had a record of 10 and 5. Tuffle hitting 250, 3 for 12 against Philadelphia this year. And the fastball, one ball, one strike. Carmen's really not the type of pitcher who's a high ball pitcher. You wouldn't expect him to give up a lot of home runs. He's given up 27 home runs, 8 to the Mets, and 3 starts. And a hard slider popped up. Again, Samwell, two men away. And it's a good thing Samwell had an easy shot at Number it. Bon Hayes turned completely Number around on that, on that little pop up the other way. I don't know if you can see Bon Hayes right here. Look at Hayes. See, he has turned completely around. If that ball was closer to the line, I think Bon would have had a tough time corralling that ball, but Samwell, no problem. So two men out, and the batter will be Keith Hernandez. Hernandez hitting 303 for the year, 16 home runs, 75 runs batted in. The 16 home runs tying his career high for a single season. He has hit in five straight ball games, batting 364 over the five games with three home runs, nine runs batted in, and he takes for ball one. And there's one of the banners for the Mex. I love you, Mex. Well, he has really gotten some big hits the last month and a half. Hasn't he's he? had three game-winning hits, game-winning RBI hits in his last five ball games, and he has really carried the ball club along. One ball, one strike. Fast ball for ball two. Something really, Ralph, when you think about Hernandez, there are a lot of guys who are multi-RBI threats. I mean, a guy like Daryl Strawberry can get six RBIs with two swings of the bats in a game. Hernandez is more of a big RBI man, a middle-inning RBI man. There's a base hit as he lines it to right. Wilson charging the ball, thinking he might have a play at first base, but then Hernandez going down the line took that thought away. So Keith now has hit in six straight ball games. Number 18. Breaking ball just hanging over the middle of the plate. Wilson has done that once this year, and the person he caught was Montreal pitcher Bryn Smith. So you got to scoot down the line, and Wilson will keep you from going down the line and dragging your feet down there. He'll make you hurry up. He has 17 outfield assists that leads the National League and Daryl Strawberry now the batter. Daryl hitting 270 with 32 home runs. 78 runs batted in. He's had a tough time lately. He always has a tough time in L.A. And the breaking ball. Strawberry a home run off Carmen on June the 3rd. Make that August the third. One man on base, so he's got to Carmen one time this year. I think that was the first inning home run too, and I believe Hernandez was on base at the time. Carmen against the Mets this year, no wins and one loss. Hernandez the runner at first base. Mets trailing one nothing, two men out, bottom half of the first inning. And a hard base hit to right field. Hernandez to second. 
and holding there as Wilson gets to it in a hurry. And the Mets on back to back base hits by Hernandez and Strawberry have runners at first and second with two men out. Another breaking ball. So now when Hernandez will try to zero in on Hernandez and Strawberry the next time they're up. Both of them got hits on breaking ball the first time on breaking balls. So Carmen and Paris will probably go more to the fastball the next time up. And the batter for the Mets will be Kevin McReynolds. Reynolds hitting 279. McReynolds with 24 home runs, 79 runs batted in. His career high, 26 home runs. He did that last year for San Diego. And the fastball for a ball. McReynolds has been in a mini slump. Batting 182 against Carmen. And the fastball, a strike call, one and one. Carmen has lost three straight decisions, but he's number one in the staff in average hits for nine innings that's nine he is low in walks three for nine innings and high in strikeouts 5.2 and nine innings. fly ball to right field and Wilson is there that'll do it the Mets leave two on two hits you're watching Mets baseball 87 on WWOR TV Secaucus New Jersey Gooden with a curveball gets a swinging strike. Wilson hitting 351 against the Mets this year with one home run and the fastball for strike two. Gooden with a lifetime record. Of seven wins and three losses against the Phillies. Two of those wins this year. And that fastball just does miss. It's one and two. Gooden with two consecutive complete games. Has a total of five this year, and the fastball fouled away. And other five complete games, Gooden has had two shutouts this year. He had no time last year did he put together back-to-back -to -back complete games. As a matter of fact, those two straight complete games, most in a row since 1985, when he put back-to-back -to -back complete games together four times. That's his career high. One and two. Two and two. Two balls, two strikes. Strike three. So Gooden with a fastball picks up his third strikeout. Everybody talks about Gooden's velocity, but when you can throw any pitch right there on the black like that one, you're going to get a lot of hitters out. When Wilson knew it, he just walked back to the bench. Not a lot you can do about that. And it brings up Keith Hughes. He was batting against the Mets for the first time, hitting 348. Been up 23 times. And he gets a curveball. Phillies glad to get Keith Hughes back. He was originally with the Phillies organization, then went to the Yankees, then came back to the Phillies in the Mike Easler trade June 10th of this year. They signed him in a tryout camp yeah. and then traded him to the Yankees. Good looking player. Had a fine year at Maine. 17 so, home runs. In only 90 ball games, he had 57 RBIs down there. Those are good numbers. One ball, one strike to Keith Hughes. And that pitch is strike two, one and two. Well, of course, Maine is not down there. I mean, it's only down, <laughs> down there, there in the minors. Yeah, if you're in Nova Scotia or someplace like that. No, but if you're in the majors, you are sent down. Well, yeah, right, right, even though you may be sent up north. And this ball fouled off the end of the bat. The count stays at one and two. And you know, it's interesting, if you're in a Class A minor league, as you look at Steve Jeltz on deck, if you're in a Class A minor leagues and you're sent to the double A level, you're not, you don't really uh, uh, talk about being sent up. 
all, the only time you talk about being sent up is when you go to the major leagues. From the minors to the majors. Yeah, well, A to 2A is not being up to 2A, or 2A to 3A is not up to 3A. But you go to the big leagues, that's up. It's as high up as you can get in this game. That's where you want to be. And that pitch sailing right over the head of Keith Hughes. Speaking of up. <laughs> he got down. <laughs> what? It's amazing. We're sending down, and whatever goes up must come down. <laughs> wow, that was close. He was reacquired from the Yankees on June the 10th. Profile looks like a movie star. Doesn't he, though? Good looking young man. And the breaking ball is foul, so the count stays at two and two. <laughs> Sarah, the right field ball girl, it's her fourth error of the week. We just got and here. The Mets haven't even yeah, played. That's right. Her batting practice today was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> like she was trying to feel that with a spatula <laughs> working out in the kitchen and there's a fastball for ball three so it's a full count to Keith Hughes hey I remember many times when that glove felt like a spatula the balls are bouncing out of it like hotcakes box up a few huh? I'll tell you never ever get away from it the old timers games Bouncing ball out to first base and Hernandez throws to Gooden for out number two. Yeah, that's why I don't like to play in those old timer games because guys are yelling the same things they yelled at you when you were active. I mean, you know, those, some of those things are nasty, even though they're saying it. Just kidding. I like all that stuff. Box up a crate and all that stuff. I, I don't it. need to go through that stuff anymore. In Chicago, I heard a great one. Uh, Triandos was doing the catching. <laughs> And he was missing a few back there, and somebody in the infield yelled, open up the glove. <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't heard that one. That's I, cute. That's a good one. I like that. And now the batter, Steve Jeltz, and that's strike one. Jeltz batting 118 against Good Gooden, two for 17. Overall hitting 227 with no home runs, 10 runs batted in. One ball, one strike. Phillies leading one nothing on a run in the first. There's a balloon in right field, and Daryl didn't know what to do. He didn't know what. <laughs> He's approaching it very cautiously. A rather festive evening, huh? Fireworks night. There's the uh, right foot technique of breaking a balloon. There's several techniques you can use when trying to catch a balloon. Darrell took the cautious approach. I'll tell you, a guy used to catch everything in sight, and a guy that you had a line about, that was as good a line as I think I've ever heard. Gary Maddox in our booth now, working for the Phillies, Secretary of Defense, or the, I guess he's out of office now. <laughs> Two thirds of the world is covered by water, and the other third by Gary Maddox. Well, I mean to tell you, <laughs> he could flat move in the outfield, and now working with the Philly outfielders in spring training and working for the Prism Network, the cable company in Philadelphia, is doing a remarkable job, I hear. Unbelievable. The reviews, Gary, are great. <laughs> Telling you. <laughs> our, <laughs> our director just said a, a terrible thing. Two and two the count, and it's in there strike three. We'll get back to that later. Four strikeout for Dwight Gooden, a one, two, three inning, and the score at the end of one and a half innings. The Phillies won, the Mets nothing. Now here's a word from Dodge. But Gary Maddox and Tim can explain Number the situation. Eight. Well, it was July the 4th, 1976, and Gary was at first base. And we were in Pittsburgh, and he tagged up, and I passed him instead of a grand. Uh, ba bases were loaded. <laughs> bases were loaded. Gary was at first, and I passed him, and I got credit for a grand slam single. And he, he, we came back to the bench, and Gary said, "You'll never forget me, will you?" <laughs> and I, I, said, I said, "No." Here he is to haunt your life forever. <laughs> He's following you around. <laughs> Gary Carter leads it off here in the bottom of the second inning against Don Carmen. The Mets trailing one to nothing. And the numbers on Gary this year. One and one. 
And once again, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to play Ask Tim and Ralph. All the answers will be judged by the marquee of Mountain Lakes, and all decisions are final. <laughs> what? Popped up in shallow left center field. Thompson in, and Keith Hughes makes the play. So one away here in the second, one to nothing Philadelphia. And Ralphie Boy, here is the question. What was the number on the uniform of the St. Louis Browns pitch, pinch hitter, Eddie Goodell, back in 1951? This question sent in by Douglas Babbitts of Ramsey, New Jersey. Oh, Eddie Goodell. Goodell was three foot seven inches tall, but his number wasn't three sevenths. No. His number was one eighth. That is correct. All right, Ralphie, baby. Nice going. So we're even again, right? Both four and five. Now I got a protest on the last one. Yeah, I agree with you. <laughs> I, I don't know if the marquee of Mountain Lakes is going to. <laughs> <laughs> That's really becoming a race right there. I'm telling you. And we're in a race right here. The Cardinals losing today 9-2 to two to Montreal. And it's 0-1 to Howard Johnson. Oops, tried to check but couldn't, 0-2. Oh, Gary Maddox, a, a very gracious man, a very humble man, has done so much in the city of Philadelphia for the child guidance clinic there under our deprived children children from broken homes he has raised a ton of money to keep that clinic afloat one of the first to ever wear a beard in the major leagues and it was because of a infection that he picked up in Vietnam and he couldn't really shave it was his problem with uh, the rash on his face very class man came to the Phillies in 1975 for Willie Montanez and retired last year in early June after a splendid career one and two to Howard Johnson. One and nothing Phillies here in the bottom of the second. Almost hit Hojo. Two and two. Hojo has been a hot batter, but not against the Phillies. In the last, but he has done well against the Phillies, but in the last two weeks, he's been very hot. Right there, the Phillies making him skip rope. In his last seven games, he's hit 393 with three home runs and six runs batted in. With three game-winning RBIs. Ojo with 13 game winners on the season. It ties him for fourth in the National League. Two and two to Johnson. Way outside. Three and two. Carmen from Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. About 19 miles from Norman, where the University of Oklahoma is. Johnson is on there. The first walk issued by Carmen. RBI single by Bon Hayes netted the Phillies a run in the first, scoring Juan Samuel, who had walked and stolen second. It's one to nothing Phillies. Santana loops it foul, 0 and 1. Taking over in the National League West. Well say. As we mentioned, they swept the Phillies over the weekend. Phillies four and five on that coast trip. The Mets were seven and two. Starting pitcher for San Francisco at the Dome this evening, Mike Lacoste going against Mike Scott. Inside and low, one and one. Cincinnati won their ball game today, three to two, over the Dodgers in extra innings. So the Dodgers with two back-to-back -back extra inning ball games, one with the Mets that was 16 innings. I believe that Cincinnati game went 12. I believe it did. And Cincinnati now five and a half games back of the Giants. There goes Johnson. Ground ball to the to the right of the shortstop Jelts. And Johnson's going to go all the way to third. Boy, the hit and run. There is nothing when it's worked beautifully that shows up like a well-executed hit and run play. And that was one. Well, this is perfect. The shortstop covering on the play. And Santana pulls the outside pitch. That's not easy. And he gets it by Jeltz, who is com coming back to the ball after starting to cover second. Johnson goes to third. Santana with a base hit. And the Mets have Dwight Gooden coming up. A 
hit and run play well done by Johnson and Santana. Schmidt now in to talk to Carmen. And Von Hayes in. Gooden is a good hitter. He has 11 hits this year. And three RBIs. 11 for 52. One out, runners at the corners. Bottom of the second inning. Swing and a miss on the breaking ball. Look how shallow Schmidt is at third base. Unless the ball's hit sharply, I would think he'll come home. Now he's moving back. Of course, there's always the threat of the squeeze play. Yeah. Davy Johnson doesn't like that play, but he will use it with the pitcher occasionally. Not now, however, for it's 0-2 to Gooden. On deck batter is Mookie Wilson. come home now. Santana's going to go all the way to third base. And Schmidt looking at second and a good job by Howard Johnson as runners move up to second and third. Dwight Gooden doing a good job of taking off the first base and then moving on around the second so the Mets don't lose on the ground ball right back to the pitcher. They pick up a base. Originally runners at first and third. Now they end up with runners at second and third. This is not executed very well by the Phillies. Schmidt didn't close the gap and now he runs the runner toward home and that gives Johnson time to get to third. And a good job right here by Howard Johnson. Right here Paris to Schmidt. Schmidt looking and then throwing and the tag is made. Ralph you made the key point that Schmidt didn't close the gap. He, he stood his ground. He wanted to get two outs. If you close the gap, that's the best way to make it with one throw. Make it with one throw and the other runner, the back runner doesn't get the second. Right. It was a good play by Carmen initially as Wilson takes a breaking ball high, popped to second in the first. One to nothing Phillies. And Mets have runners at second and third and two outs. Breaking ball high, 2-0. and oh. The on-deck batter is Tim Tuffle. Santana at third and Gooden at second. Outside, three and oh. If you're a catcher running a runner back to third base, you don't really have to look at the runner. All you do is look at the guy who you're going to throw the ball to. And in that situation, Mike Schmidt. I don't believe they just walked Mookie Wilson. They just walked him intentionally. Lee Elia said, with a count, three balls and no strikes, put him on. And now they'll take on a hot hitter in Tim Tuffle. Tuffle. Elia didn't want Wilson hitting with a 3-0 or a 3-1 count. Could throw in breaking balls. I mean, there are a lot of ways to... Mookie, a free swinger. He goes after a lot of bad balls. That is strange. Well, the base is loaded now. No place to put Tuffle. Two outs. Timmy entered the game batting 333, and he has 44 RBIs with 10 home runs. Breaking ball and an important pitch. The first one with the bases loaded. Strike one. 222 career average against Carmen, but only nine at bats. Stop Steve Jeltz makes the catch. So the Mets threaten once again. And since then, he's come up with four more. 
Four RBIs for Don. He leads it off here in the third. It's one to nothing Philadelphia. Oh and one. Gooden has struck out four. He gave up a single to Samuel to open the game. Samuel stole second and scored on a single by Bon Hayes. Strike two, 0 oh and two. toward third kind of a situation where the bat was swinging down <laughs> got an operatic ring to it doesn't it Don Carmen curveball pulled toward second tough old tricky little hop feels it throws him out at six in a row retired by Gooden and the batter Juan Samuel Coming to the plate, second baseman, Ron Samuel. the first man in Major League history to have four seasons with double figures in the glamour categories. Doubles, triples, home runs, and stolen bases. This is his fourth year that he's achieved that feat. He is a marvelous talent. 25 homers, 89 RBIs, primarily as the leadoff batter. Swing and a miss, 0 1. In his rookie year, set a stolen base record, stealing 72 stolen bases, breaking a record held by Tim Reigns. And of course, that record was broken by Coleman, who stole 110 in his rookie year. Back in 1985. Good curveball, 0 and 2. Doc looks sharp. He really breaks off a great curveball right here. Look at the movement on this one. Hmm. The old fashioned drop. High fastball fouled away and back in the stands. Still 0 and 2 to some. See, your old buddy got a call in the note sheet. Richie Ashburn. Mm -hmm. Von Hayes with 100 stolen bases. The first Philly to have 100, I shouldn't say stolen bases, 100 walks. First Philly to have 100 walks since Richie Ashburn did it in 1955. As a left handed hitter. Left handed yeah. hitter. Schmidt's Mike Schmidt, done, yeah. Schmidt's done it a lot of times, but. Whitey Ashburn, the most valuable player, 1962 New York Mets. Fastball is high, one and two. Had a 306 that year and quit. He said, most valuable player of what? We lost 120 games. Got responsible for <laughs> handing Marvelous Marv all his quotes. He, he just made a hero out of Marvelous Marv. Another one tapped foul, still one and two to Samuel. Another Philly broadcaster, by the way, Chris Wheeler, who went to Penn State has a friend watching in Penn State this evening. Carrie Cates, a student there. You get into a fight when you start talking to both of them about Penn State and Nebraska. Richie Ashford from Tilden, Nebraska, and Wheels from Penn State up at State College in PA. Change up drilled at Johnson. Two outs. So Samuel is down on the scorcher to Johnson, and here's Milt Thompson. He struck out in the first inning. Breaking ball outside. 1 0 to Milt, who came to the Phillies along with Steve Bedrosian for Ozzie Virgil a couple of years ago. You know, talking about Richie Ashburn that first year, he won a boat. He said, what am I going to do with a boat in Tilden, Nebraska? <laughs> he did put it in the water somewhere around New York, and it sunk. <laughs> Grounded toward <the> third. <laughs> a typical boat for a typical year for a team. The home schedule are available at all Ticketron outlets, Shea Stadium's advanced ticket window, or by calling 718-507-TIXX during regular business hours for ticket information. 
Okie doke, Ralph. And Keith Hernandez leads it off here in the bottom of the third with the Mets trailing one to nothing. On the corner, Keith singled on the breaking ball his first time up. So we'll see if Carmen works that fastball in on the hands as he is apt to do against left handers. Rusty Stobbs going to join you in the fourth. And we just kind of winked at each other. He, he's all ready to go, and he's in the starting block. Yeah. He ought to have some great material after having all that time off. <laughs> we both realize that we are glad in this position and don't have to handle that fastball in on the hands anymore. <laughs> one and one to Hernandez. Whoops, breaking ball. Breaking ball, a very dangerous pitch for a left-handed pitcher to throw to a left-handed hitter. Generally speaking, more mistakes are made with the breaking ball than with any other pitch, lefty to lefty. Outside, three and one to the Mex. You know, when I was playing as a right-hand batter, I never liked to face left-handed pitching. I much preferred right-handers because of that breaking ball being up there to hit, hanging in there. It's different. I, you know, you would never ever hear a left-handed hitter say that he doesn't like to face a right-handed hitter. But you often hear right-handed hitters say that they don't like to face left-handed hitters or pitchers. Mm -hmm. Toughest I ever faced was Kurt Simmons. Philadelphia Phillies. He had a real, this is when he could throw hard. He had Before a real he good had fastball. the lawnmower accident. Yeah. Cut off half of his Big left toe. Fastball is high. Hernandez on there. One of the reasons they trail one to nothing. On the corner. Kurt could really blow when he first came up, I heard. He's one of the best. Of course, he had that herky jerk motion that went with it. Looked like he was throwing with about 10 tentacles coming at you. Oh. Strawberry fouls the breaking ball away. So Daryl in the hole, 0 and 2. Cardinals lost their game this afternoon, 9 to 2. Montreal and St. Louis playing in front of 50,200 people up in Montreal. Outside, 1 and 2. Six and three on the road this year, only three and six in Philadelphia. Daryl fouls the breaking ball back. That was a Daryl's gonna get another one here. It's in the dirt and off the glove of Lance Parrish. Hernandez moves to second, and we'll see how it's going to be scored. Well, it is a curveball down low. And it bites into the dirt and bounces away. Parrish not sliding over to get in front of it, and it's being scored a wild pitch as you look at it from this angle. It was in the dirt, but you can see where that ball could have been handled. Not should have, but could have. Two and two. Oh, the hanging breaking ball, and understandably, Darrell gave up on it. And he strikes out. Well, it starts, one. starts off at him, and Darrell pulling away, and it just breaks over the inside part of the plate. But, say understandably, because that was a tricky curveball. Good curveball. Yeah, it was. Here's Kevin McReynolds, 0 for 1. a tennis ball behind home plate. You can see it in your screen between Parrish and Carmen. Now the bat boy over to retrieve it and play being stopped. Oh, good cut on a good pitch. Reynolds wants that one back, I think. Did pretty well against the Philadelphia Phillies. 274 batting average and 
a good amount of home runs with nine. Two of those home runs this year. Oh and one to Kevin McReynolds. Inside one and one. Teams try to pitch McReynolds inside with the theory going with the theory that he likes the ball out over the plate and he does likes to extend his arms. Fly ball deep to right center Thompson over and he makes the play just short of the warning track Hernandez tags and goes into third base but there are two outs now and the batter Gary Carter. Away. One and oh to Gary. Gary flied to left his first at bat. And he's done well against Carmen. Way outside, two and oh to Gary Carter. Carter picked up his 1,750th base hit in extra innings against the Dodgers yesterday as you look at Keith Hernandez on third with two men out. So Gary 250 hits away from 2000 and Keith Hernandez only seven hits away from 2000. Popped up in the infield. Hayes is in Parrish looking at Hayes and Bond makes the play the most he's one of the few outfielders that plays situations and really charges the ball has an idea what he's doing with it hits the cutoff man he's one of the guys that I really respect as an outfielder in the National League leads the National League and assists with 17 and has done it before here's Vaughn Hayes who spends some time in the outfield also at first base and Gooden starts off with a curveball for ball one Hayes with a blue base hit the drive in the only run of this ball game in the first Hayes with 112 walks. First left hand batter to have over 100 walks since Richie Ashburn did it back in 1955 for the Phillies. The record for walks in a single season 170 by Babe Ruth. Two and oh the count as Dwight Gooden trails in the ball game by a score of one nothing. He has struck out four through his first three innings and the fastball a strike. Two balls one strike. Top of the fourth inning. Philadelphia one the Mets nothing. The first of three with the Phillies and again a fastball strike and it's two and two. against Dwight Gooden doing a good job of hitting 13 hits and 37 at bats over 333 just does miss and that ball was close that certainly was Ralph that's a uh, Bob Davidson it, it, it has not been a consistent call right there some have been strikes some have been balls call uh, two strikes on you we can look at it right here Oh, Gary caught it did reach that uh, hand out a little bit so it was a little bit off the plate but that's been one of the areas where you got really as you see Hayes swing and foul that one back. You, you, you. So the count remains at three and two in the foul ball. Well I don't blame him so much for that because after you take a pitch that is very very close and it goes to your benefit you know under normal circumstances you're not going to get another opportunity to get a pitch going your way. Hayes with that widespread stance attributes the fact that he has become a much better hitter because of spreading out doesn't have that stride that he had before bounce back to the shortstop Santana will have to hurry he does. so a good play by Santana on the speedy Von Hayes second baseman is first time up. Ball 
ball is missed. Smith has a lifetime average against the Mets of 256 with 44 home runs. Overall, he has hit 522 home runs. And against Gooden, hitting 194. One and one. A couple of those hits Mike uh, Schmidt had off Dwight Gooden. You saw he only had six hits. Two of them were home runs, though. Foul ball one and two. With Gooden throwing in the middle lineies and Schmidt with that great home run swing, something's got to go. You make some contact on that good fastball. Certainly with the power of Mike Schmidt, you're going to hit some home runs. As Richie Allen would have said, something's got to leave. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, he hit some landmarkers. Philadelphia Philly ball player, great hitter. Of course, he moved around after that. Two and two. I don't know if this actually happened or not, but Richie Allen and Greg Luzinski were supposed to get together for a home run contest in Philadelphia, an old timers home run contest. I don't know if they had that already, but I know it was proposed, and that both guys had agreed to do it trying to find out from the Philly people if that has happened yet. I think it has. I read about it. I think Allen won it. Of course, Allen is a highly regarded ball player. Right? you got to take him over Luzinski as far as consistency would be concerned. Well, this is a pretty consistent curveball by Dwight Gooden. This ball almost is a strike. Mike Schmidt. Getting the benefit of that call, a little bit up, maybe a little bit in, but certainly not a lot of either one. Good and could easily have had two strikeouts in this inning. A little better call by Davidson, the umpire. There's a curve, and it's hit to short. Good play by Santana. And Schmidt loses a base hit as Rafael Santana turns in a fine play at shortstop. Raphael Santana is going to show you what a smooth shortstop looks like right here. Ball's hammered in the hole. Nice and easy. Plant your feet. Nice toss to first base. And he gets Mike Schmidt. Watch his plant. Nice and easy. Knows he has him. Good controlled throw. Didn't rush himself. So two men away, and the batter will be Lance Parrish. Parrish hitting 243. Was struck out his first time up, one down swinging at a 3 2 curveball. And he gets a curveball for his first pitch. It'll be interesting to see what happens with Lance Parrish in 1988. Von Hayes, when he came over to the Phillies, had a very poor first season, really struggled with National League pitching. Certainly, Lance Parrish, an outstanding hitter in the American League, has struggled with National League pitching in 1987. Ball one and one. You changed leagues. Did you find it difficult when you went to the American League from the National? Well, I thought it was real difficult the first couple of times around, uh, in that I really didn't know what people had. I didn't know the movement on their ball. I didn't know what their patterns were. I, uh, for, for myself, I used to study the pitching so much, I had a basic idea of what most people wanted to do. When I went over there, I had no idea. And the changeup and the swing to miss one and two. When I went from the National League to the American, as you look at this capacity crowd here tonight for fireworks night, I went to Al Rosen, who studied pitchers as well as anybody, and I got all my information from Al, and that helped. I talked to the catchers of, of the Detroit Tiger team. I talked to uh, some of the hitters that I respected in the league about different pitchers, but you really have to see them to, to, to know it. In the early part of that time in the American League, I, I tried not to swing at the first pitch too often. I wanted to see what the guys had. And the fastball gets him. So Perry struck out the first time on a curve, the second time on the fastball. So Howard Johnson coming to the plate, hitting 280 for the year. 34 home runs and 89 runs batted in, and batting against Don Carmen for the second time. Ball 
for ball one. With all the home runs that Don Carmen has given up to the Met hitters in 1987, it, it looks like he came into this game determined to pitch the right-handed hitters tough inside. He's thrown a lot of breaking balls, but his fastball, he has really tried to keep the right-handed hitters honest by busting them in on off the plate. And there's one right on the inside corner. Good fastball. One ball, one strike. He's to do your homework and more things than one. On deck batter, Rafael Santana. And the looping curve. Two balls, one strike. The on deck bat boy was Paul. Two balls, one strike. And the breaking ball inside, three and one. I think the Phillies felt that Carmen was throwing too many good strikes to hit with both pitches. Having had Steve Carlton as, as a study, no one used the breaking ball in off the plate better than Steve Carlton. And that darting slider, he threw low and inside, just out of the strike zone. And the fastball hit hard at Schmidt at third. So a line drive, but caught. Carmen starts off and picks up a strike. In case you haven't heard, Montreal defeated St. Louis 9-2 to today. So the Mets are three games behind the Cardinals in second. Montreal now four games out. The fly ball hit the center field. Thompson is there. Two men away. Batting with the Mets trailing one to nothing. And a high pop up on the first base side. Von Hayes the first baseman and the Mets go in order. The score at the end of three. It's the Phillies one the Mets nothing. Now here's a word from Sherison Lehman Brothers. season is a disappointment to Glenn Wilson and the Phillies. Good curveball strike one. You were talking about the Cardinals Ralph before they lost their game today that that loss today put them even Stevens since the All Star break 25 and 25. Ground ball topped out to third tough play for Johnson he can't make it in time. So the infield base hit for Wilson breaks a string of 11 in a row for Dwight Gooden and it brings up Keith Hughes. I will get to the throw. Moving toward the ball to make sure that he had a chance to make the fielding play. And this ball grounded to Keith. He'll go to second. They get none. Santana not on the bag at second as Keith's throw was a little high and the umpire at second. Jerry Crawford said he was not on the bag and he wasn't. It's just a ground to the first Hernandez trying to get away from the, the base runner throws the ball up and away from Santana. It pulls him off the bag. The last couple of weeks Heath Hernandez had a ball that he threw to second base that hit the runner in the back. So just, an error. It really was an error. I think that error will be called on Keith Hernandez not on Rafael Santana. It is being charged to Keith Hernandez. So that puts runners at first and second with no one out and brings up Steve Jeltz. Jeltz struck out on a 3 2 curveball his first time up. Batting 226 and hitting, hitting in the eighth position in the batting order. Maldonado, if I'm not mistaken, that Keith Hernandez hit in the elbow. That is true. And the first pitch to Jones, a breaking ball for ball one. As Timmy says sometimes, it's not the throw, it's how you get there. Phillies leading 1-0, runners at first and second, no one out. We're in the top of the fifth inning. 
Steve Jones hitting eighth. The pitcher due up next. And the fastball a strike. <laughs> and oh. One ball, one strike. And a good curve just low, and it's two and one. I know how much you enjoy watching people bunt anyway. It's one of your favorite plays in baseball, isn't it? I'm not an advocate of the sacrifice. I'm from the Earl Weaver School. Looking at Jim Davenport there, the third base coach for the Phillies. Former manager, outstanding player for the San Francisco Giants for many seasons. Outstanding third baseman, good hitter. Two and one, the count to Jelts. And a ground ball to short. Santana will go for two. There's one and the other. And a double play. Wilson goes over to third, and now two men out. Talk so many times about how the great pitchers find a way when they do get in trouble to get out of it. They can find that little bit extra or make that certain pitch that's going to get him out of trouble. Dwight Gooden has certainly shown that ability over the last three or four seasons. Now the batter will be Don Carmen, who has grounded out in this one appearance and the fastball for ball one. As Tim McCarver pointed out, Carmen went a long time without a base hit, 48 at bats. But now he has five in 49 at bats. And he has driven in four runs. Mets have him shifted over tremendously to left field. He's trying to bunt his way on for a base hit to get the run in, fouls it off. Which was not a bad move. Tim Tuffle was playing deep at second base, almost back to the grass. Hernandez was extremely deep. Carmen, a pretty good athlete, runs fairly well, for, especially for a pitcher. Trying to take advantage of everything he could there. One ball, one strike to Carmen. He got Tim Tuffle back on the mud anyway. Yeah, he brought him in a couple of steps. And the fastball is missed, one and two. Hey, Rafael Santana has he played so far over in that hole, there is a tremendous gap between second base and Rafael Santana. He's really too far over. He I, I agree. The ball. He, he could cover anything that's hit that way because it won't be bit hit hard. So he's really over too far, I think. Howard Johnson playing extremely close to the bag. The shift is severe, to say the least. Awful big hole right through the middle and to the right of the pitcher. And there's the angle right there. A situation like this, a pitcher should be trying to think like he's he's in one of those pepper games. He shouldn't really try to make a lot of hard contact. If he just moves that ball on the ground, he can help himself. He did pull the ball his first time up, but he ran it out to second. And he punches the ball. He goes foul. And he fouls off another fastball. And he is battling. You see him choking up on that bat, just trying to make some contact. Two balls, two strikes. Wilson, the runner at third. Two men out. Top of the fifth inning. The Phillies leading 1-0. Fastball again fouled away. Carlos Steen behind Lee Elia, pitching coach for the Phillies. Gomer Powell. Wilson, the runner at third. And the curveball gets him. So Gooden picks up his sixth strikeout to end the inning. One hit, a man left at third. There was one error and the score at the end. And Carmen starts off with a fastball for ball one. Mookie a better hitter percentage wise as a left hand batter but playing against left hand pitching platooning with Len Daxter a left hand batter. Mookie batting. 350 left handed and 269 right handed. And that's ball three. Boogie certainly went through a, a tough thing mentally when he it started getting to him about not playing in center field enough. Got himself uh, in, a, in a mental funk there. Had a real tough period for about three weeks with the bat, and that really hurt him a lot. 
He has certainly jumped out away from that. Has himself on the right track now. Been swinging the bat very well as of late. Last 20 games, he's hit 400 coming into this game. Ball four, and Mookie is on. He represents the time run. The fifth inning is a pressure inning for any starting pitcher. I don't care who they are from time to time. When you get to that fifth inning, that's the one you know you need to qualify for the win. Some pitchers handle it like it's nothing. Some people put pressure on themselves. You certainly don't want to start this inning off walking a hitter. Harmon did that. Score one nothing. The walk. There goes Mookie. A hit and run play again. And Sam Howell recovers to feel the ball as he was going over to cover at second with Mookie running. But he had time. So that they can do just that. Get back and get a ground ball in case it is the hit and run. So the Mets with a runner at second with one out and Keith Hernandez a better. Keith has singled and walked in his two appearances. Keith always waits when an airplane flies over until the plane goes by before getting in the batter's box. Some hitters like to hit with that plane going by and one of them rusty stop. It's the truth Ralph the outfielders the infielders they can't hear anything they can't help each other out. And the first pitch is ball one. There's a play from the outfield or a play where you have to give some assistance no one can hear. I was just like Keith. I always used to jump out of the batter's box but then especially in the pinch hitting situations I was in toward the end of my career I felt it was to my advantage to stay in and hit. Rusty Stop with 100 career pinch hits. And the 1 0 pitch to Hernandez. Ball two, fastball, two balls, no strikes. Met pitching. You see Hernandez's record against the Phillies in his career. He got eight or nine home runs in, in three starts. You've got to do something different. As far as Claude Osteen is concerned, it's pitching inside. He has given up. 27 home runs this year. Two balls, no strikes. And 3 and 0. Oh. I would be surprised to see David Johnson let Keith Hernandez swing here. Certainly would be an aggressive play. But I think I think he'd be taken. And he takes a strike in the count 3 and 1. Not so three and one. Well, the theory is that you get the same pitch three and one that you get three and oh. So why not hit three and oh? Well, I don't think they give you the same pitch. <laughs> That's the theory. <laughs> theory doesn't work. That, that theory's got some holes punched in it, I'll tell you that much. And this ball grounded to Von Hayes at first base, and they pick up the out. Wilson goes over to third, so the Mets have a runner at third base with two men away. And Darrell Strawberry, the batter. Darrell, one for two. Pookie Wilson has to be sure he's alive. Carmen has thrown a lot of breaking balls down in the dirt. He's already been a while pitch in this game. Strawberry singled the right field off a curveball his first time up, and then was called out on strikes off a curveball his second. A third for the Mets. Two men away, bottom of the fifth, and the first pitch a breaking ball a called strike. That's a curveball on the outside part of the plate. The reason why he beat Darrell Strawberry and struck him out on that curveball last time because he had been pitching him the fastball inside. He threw the curveball inside. It was the first time he had done it to a left-handed hitter all day long, and he beat Darrell Strawberry last time with it. And again, the curveball away, and it's strike two. of Darryl Strawberry's 32 home runs have been off left hand pitchers. Fastball and a ball. It's in the hole right now. And it's coming. Gets it and fouls it. Again, the one 
two pitch. And it's hit right up the middle. A base hit in the ball game is tied. Wilson scores. It's one to one. That time, Lance Parrish called for a slider, not the curveball. And he gets it up right out over the plate. Darryl Strawberry does what you have to do in those situations. He went right back through the middle with the ball. Drove in a tough run, a two-out RBI right back through the middle. So the Mets are tied it at one. They have a runner at first that can steal, and the batter is Kevin McReynolds. Kevin has flied out the two times he has been up. Once to right field, once to center. And a toss to first. Strawberry with 25 stolen bases and 34 attempts. Again, Corman walked the leadoff hitter, and it cost him. Strawberry's 79th run batted in. There goes Strawberry. The throw by Parrish in the dirt, and the tag is made. Good play by Sam Wild to tag out Strawberry, and that'll end it. But the Mets tied up as they scored one run on one. But the Mets have tied it up 1-1, one -one, top of the sixth. And the ambassador to Orlando, Florida, Steve Zabriskie's in. Thanks a lot, Russ, and good evening, everybody. Juan Samuel swings and misses at the first pitch for strike one. Sammy's one for two. He singled and scored the Philadelphia run back in the first inning, and he lined hard to Howard Johnson at third base in the third. One to one New York and Philadelphia as we start the top of the sixth inning. That fastball just missing. One ball one strike. Dwight Gooden has struck out six through the first five innings. He has not walked the batter and has given up just one run back in the first inning and a total of three hits. Grounded sharply to short Santana over in time. Another fine play by Rafael Santana. Milt Thompson 0 for 2 is struck out and grounded on, and he takes a breaking ball. Lord Charles is around tonight. Dwight has featured a fine breaking ball, strike one. If there's any one thing that surprised me when Dwight Gooden first came back was how effective his curveball was right off the bat. It's the reason why he's had the success he's had. And again, a lot of people talk about the fastball setting up the other pitches. I think the curveball sets up Dwight Gooden's fastball. And I agree. There it is again for strike two. And the Mets certainly did not want to get by the sixth inning behind the Phillies because the Phillies record when they're ahead after six after the sixth inning is 51 and five. Thanks in no small measure to the league leader in saves, Steve Bedrosian who has saved 35 games. Let's put the clamps the clamps down tight. Thompson with a count of no balls two strikes. And a fastball for strike three. Strikeout number seven for the doctor. In the first inning. And the curveball dropping in for strike one. You know what that really means, Steve? If you're the, if you're the hitter and you're a right-handed hitter and you go up there and you get two strikes on you, you have to cover that. You have to make an adjustment. It's not the umpire's fault. He's, you know, there's been an inconsistency, but he's called it often enough that you just cannot take that pitch. And you better be aware of that before you get in the batter's box. Or are you going to tote that lumber back to the dugout? That curveball too high, one and one. These are the players Gooden has struck out, and the number of times they have either been taking or looking. And it's five to two looking. Was a changeup. Boy, I am telling you, that was an outstanding changeup. Only about the second or third one he's <laughs> thrown tonight, but this may be the best one he's ever thrown. I'll tell you what, he, he picked the right guy to throw it to also. Von Hayes pulling it just off that ball automatically. Watch his head. Watch his head right now. He is so far off that ball, he has no chance. 
This one low and inside. Last year he was about all the Phillies had, and at times this season he's been the only consistent offensive producer. Well, the, the Phillies had another player over there that <laughs> he was only the MVP. Other than Mike Schmidt, I mean, you can't ever. Let's don't leave him out of this conversation. No, no, no. no in fact, he's automatically <laughs> included. Carter hangs on to the curveball for strike three. Dwight Gooden strikes out two and retires the Phillies in order. Kevin McReynolds as we start the bottom of the sixth inning. McReynolds swinging and missing for strike one was at bat when Daryl Strawberry was caught stealing to end the fifth inning. The Mets tying it in the fifth on Daryl's RBI base hit to center. McReynolds has flied out twice and he rips one fair inside the bag for extra bases down the left field line. Hughes over to get it and McReynolds hustling into second with a double. McReynolds has been struggling. It's only his eighth hit in his last 53 at bats. But he really gets the bat hit on this ball. Ball right down on knees. He just jerks it by the third baseman. And I'll tell you what, Keith Hughes makes a pretty good play on this ball to get it back in, but the throw is a little offline, and Jeltz cuts it off. You see it going by Schmidt. It's just a rope. Just missed that ball. Too sharply hit for Schmidt to get it. So McReynolds at second with nobody out for Gary Carter, who has flied to left center field and popped the first. A strike call. And credit Kevin McReynolds with a, a really good double because had he not really busted it out of that batter's box, he might have had a little trouble getting into second base. Kevin runs so smoothly that often you don't and you don't realize how fast he is running. And you could tell that time that he was hustling all the way. I was kind of like that myself, Steve. I just couldn't tell how fast I was running. <laughs> oh, it hit the umpire at third base, Terry Tata. The home plate umpire, Bob Davidson, makes a foul ball call. That ball was ripped and appeared to hit Terry Tata right on the leg. It's got to hurt him right there. Gary Carter tomahawks this ball. Just gets on top of it. We're going to get a look at it here. Ball's up in the zone. He just jumps up there and gets it. Hits in foul territory and just nails Terry Tatum. Just nowhere to go. The ball's just hooking right into him. Put some ice on that tonight. Boy, I'll tell you. Nowhere to hide when it comes down the line like that. I think everybody who's played who's been at third base leading off trying to get a good jump into home plate on the ground ball, they teach you that. That's what you're supposed to practice all the time in spring training. Somebody ropes a shot down at you at third base. They got me a few times. I know that. Nowhere to go when that ball's hooking into you. Two strikes the count to Carter. Gary lays off a breaking ball in the dirt and the count. Punches it to right field for a base hit. McReynolds will be held at third as Glenn Wilson fires the ball over the head of the catcher, Lance Parrish. Don Carmen backing up and Carter hustling to second on the play. Sam Perlazzo had to hold McReynolds up as Wilson charged the ball. There's no way you can anticipate a bad throw. Gary Carter just goes the other way. It's not the prettiest hit, but it certainly is effective. Wilson, one of the finest arms in baseball, overthrows the cutoff man. You've got to give Carmen a lot of credit or that run's going to score and give Carter credit for seeing the ball being an overthrow. This is not a good throw by Wilson. This is a terrible throw. I mean, he is very fortunate that he didn't throw over Carmen. Carmen was actually backing up way back there. Carmen really had to hustle to get back there, too, because that play developed quickly. And now Howard Johnson is going to be walked intentionally to load the bases with nobody out as Lee Elia checks his lineup card. Johnson walked in the second and lined hard to Schmidt at third base in the fourth inning. 
Sammy Palazzo certainly could not anticipate a high throw from Glenn Wilson. As we remarked earlier in the game, Wilson is leading the National League in assists from an outfield. He's got 17 assists coming into this game. And here's Rafael Santana, who has won for two. He's single to left in the second and flying to center in the fourth. And has been the thorn in the side of Don Carmen all year. Strike one. I mean, there's not too many people can say they gave up two home runs in one year to Rafael Santana because he's only hit one home run every year. Until this year. Now he has five and 40 RBIs. Got a chance to play add on right now. And he chases a bad one on the count 0 and 2. Base is loaded. Save the run. McReynolds at third base. Carter's down at second. And Johnson's at first. And Santana struck out on a high fastball for the first out of the inning. Only the second strikeout for Don. See that? Base is loaded, one out, a 1-1 tie in the sixth inning. Uh, fastball foul back. I guess it was low. It looked pretty good, a fastball at the knees, but it's one ball, one strike. But he got his one strike out. He's working on his second one. Breaking ball, hit the center field. Thompson going back, makes the catch. McReynolds tags. He will score. Carter tags and goes to third. And the Mets lead two to one. Dwight Gooden with a sacrifice fly and his fourth RBI of the year. Again, I'm going to point out that Dwight Gooden choked up there and tried to drive the ball right back through the middle here. And now, Hits that ball nice and sharp. Nice play out there by Milt Thompson. But Dwight Gooden certainly gets an A-plus for driving that run in. It gives the Mets a one-run lead. Now runners at first and third with two out for Mookie Wilson, who is 0-for-1 and has walked twice and scored a run. Inside, ball one. It's a remaining at first. And a pitch out. Johnson not running. The count two balls, no strikes. And Mookie chases one in the dirt. Two balls, one strike. Ron Hayes asks for time and comes in to talk to Carmen. Sammy Palazzo flashing the signs. Opposing teams also realize that Howard Johnson has the opportunity of reaching the 30-30 club. They think they might be able to take advantage of him by, by trying a few pickoffs at first base. Good pitch here on which to run, and Carmen chases Johnson back again. Actually, with two balls and a strike, Mookie Wilson's not behind in the count. I always feel the hitter's ahead in the count when it's two and one. Mookie Wilson trying to drive this run in. Mookie holds up on a fastball away in the count now three and one. You see Mookie Wilson had the opportunity to drive the run in. Fastball is high. Wilson walks for the third time in the ball game. That in itself is on you. at bats. That's what I was making reference to before. I always like to try to leave the guy who is hot had the opportunity to drive the runs in. Inside for ball one. Strike over the outside. Foul ball lined hard. Off the seats, down the line. Tuffle hits it high in the air out of play. Let's see if he decides to go away. 
Tuffle stepping out while the airliner passes overhead. Parrish is also a big guy. He moves his body around behind the plate. Could be a breaking ball. Grounded to third. Schmidt will go to second just in time. Very close play as Mookie Wilson is forced at second to end the inning. Of the sixth to erase a one to nothing Philadelphia lead. The Phillies scoring their run in the first inning. Schmidt has not been a factor so far tonight as he has popped to second and was really robbed of a base hit on a fine play by Rafael Santana deep in the hole at short in the fourth inning. Ripped down the line and left but it is fair into the corner and Schmidt will have a double as McReynolds plays the carom. Ball looked as if it was hooking foul but stayed a few feet fair and Mike Next Schmidt leads off the seventh the catcher, with yet another extra power. base hit. They talk about getting the bat head out. That's exactly what he does here. Dwight Good throws a fastball. Mike Schmidt, good, quick, strong hands. What a hitter. What a player. Future Hall of Famer all the way. Never a doubt. A lock. So Schmidt at second with nobody out to lead off the seventh inning. And here's Lance Parrish, who has struck out twice once swinging, once looking. And has looked as if he hasn't had much of an idea as to what Dwight Gooden is doing out there. He has handled uh, the bat much better as of late. The last 23 games he had coming into this game, he was hitting 286. After struggling most of the season, at least he's having a spurt here. And he just reaches out and punches a breaking ball to center. Mike Schmidt will score. Mookie Wilson's throw going to second base. And just that quickly, the Philadelphia Phillies have come back and tied it up. 2-2. Parrish's 61st RBI of the year. Phillies with five hits now. The Mets with six. Fastball fouled off for strike one. The Mets have an opportunity to pick up a game on the Expos. And they would look at it, I'm sure, in terms of the game that they lost yesterday to St. Louis in the 16-inning ball game in Los Angeles. Montreal Expos are now four games out of first place, having defeated the Cardinals games out of first place only about 10 or 12 days ago they have slipped back to 11 and a half games and they were their chances were hurt even more dramatically what slim chances they have by being swept by the San Francisco Giants this past weekend and losing Kevin Gross is certainly not going to help their rotation no although Gross will probably only miss two starts a little controversy there to we'll try to get to that too. Kevin Gross suspended for 10 days. Infraction like that, it's without pay, and it shouldn't be up to the clubs. Fouled back again by Wilson, one and two. What good is discipline if it's not going to be invoked? How in the world can the league office, the National League president, impose a sanction on a player and then have the club negate it? I don't understand it at all. Well, I think Bart Giamatti's got to rethink that along with the commissioner. And Dr. Bobby Brown in the American League. If someone breaks the rules and cheats, that they certainly should pay the price. We're trying to give some example of young people in this country. And here is certainly one of the ways you have to do it. Pardon me, Russ. Here's Mickey. Or here's uh, the situation with Billy Hatcher of Houston. Not even using his own bat that was cork. He gets 10 days without pay, which is a lot more participatory action than a starting pitcher who was only going to miss two starts. I agree. And Kevin Gross is caught red-handed. A ball inside makes it two and two to Glenn Wilson. Something to do with the way in which the rules are not enforced. Half swing and he's punched out by first base umpire Tom Howie. Wilson adamantly disagrees but he has struck out and that is nine for Dwight Gooden through six and a third inning. Wilson is certainly not happy. But from the first look, I'd say he swung the bat. We'll get a look at it here. Dwight Gooden, fastball down. And if that's not a swing, I don't know what is. He did a good job to try to get the bat back as quickly as possible. But again, that is so much of an individual interpretation on the part of each umpire that it's hard to constitute what is going too far and what isn't. Well, Tom Hallian called that one right. That was going too far. 
Keith Hughes is 0 for 2. He is grounded out and reached on a fielder's choice. Preston is still arguing from the dugout. Lee Elia also having a few words with Bob Davidson. And now Elia, I think, is coming out to sort of plead Wilson's case. Well, and they get the heat off Wilson. Wilson's got to shut up now. He's an important part of their ball club. He's yelling at the guy at first base, and that's probably what Elia is saying. He's not even talking to you. He's yelling to the guy at first base. But there comes a time where the umpires are going to defend each other. And they're going to tell Wilson to shut up. That has obviously come to pass. Elia making a good move here, trying to defuse this, and probably has. Here's the pitch in question, the swing by Glenn Wilson. Dwight Gooden, an unusual pitch by Gooden here. Fastball moves down like that. That bat came across the plate pretty far. I'll tell you what, I disagree with you. I'm not too sure I would have called that a strike. That's okay, Steve. Breaking ball. You can the disagree. Dirt. Two <laughs> balls, no strikes. Thank you. Ball three to Hughes. Three and all. Third major league start. Fastball is right in there. Three and one. Well, Keith Hughes is sitting there right now. Parrish, who does not have a stolen base, really only a couple of steps off the bat. Could be running in this circumstance, though. Three and two, one out. It's three and one, though. I think the scoreboard is wrong. There's that fastball foul, and that time. <laughs> Tom Hallion, the first base umpire, almost got nailed. Earlier, it was Terry Tate at third. After that rip, maybe not. Parrish is running, and the curveball is high. So he didn't throw him a fastball. It was a tough situation when I was traded away from stadium in Minnesota. Greg Gross is the pinch hitter for Steve Jeltz. I think or very often, I should say. And Gross takes down low in the count now. Two balls, no strikes. The Phillies with runners at first and second with one center field. And the outfield is properly not deep. That one gets off Carter's glove and rolls away, and the runners will advance. Parrish to third, Hughes to second. And we'll see how it is scored. It is a 3-0 count now to Greg Gross. Quite good muscling up a little bit here, maybe tiring. Throws it behind Carter. Carter seemed to, as though he expected that ball to be on the outside part of the plate. Had to try to make an adjustment back inside and couldn't handle that pitch. They're calling it a pass ball. And ball four is it. They've already scored a run to tie the game again, 2-2. Two -two. Curve ball high and away. Gooden is struggling with his control as he has walked a pair. Parrish is the runner at third base. Second base at Hughes. And the pinch hitter Greg Gross at first. He is laboring here, there is no doubt. He is forcing the ball for the first time in this inning. And a fastball high and away makes it two balls, no strikes. Good miss coming off two complete game performances. So he has thrown a lot of pitches, as you see Randall Myers warming up in the Met bullpen. One of those last two complete games that Gooden has thrown, a shutout, he has won his last four in a row with an ERA of 1.72 over those four games. The fastball is fouled back off Gary Carter, and the count already scored a run to tie the game again, 2-2. And the curveball high and away. Gooden is struggling with his control as he has walked a pair. Parrish is the runner at third base. Second base at Hughes. And the pinch hitter Greg Gross at first. He is laboring here, there is no doubt. He is forcing the ball for the first time in this inning. And a fastball high and away makes it two balls, no strikes. 
Good miss coming off two complete game performances. So he has thrown a lot of pitches, as you see Randall Myers warming up in the net bullpen. One of those last two complete games that Gooden has thrown, a shutout, he has won his last four in a row with an ERA of 1.72 over those four games. The fastball is fouled back off Gary Carter. The a fastball and a base hit to right field. Parrish will score. Keith Hughes being sent home. The throw not in time, and on the throw, the runner from first base, Greg Gross, goes all the way around to third. So a big two-out base hit by Juan Samuel, who now has 91 RBIs on the year, and the Phillies have scored three in the inning to lead four to two. It's a fastball up and out over the plate. Samuel goes right with it to right field. Strawberry comes up and makes a, a high throw over the cutoff man again. Gary Carter, throw was up the line, had no chance. Samuel, if he'd have been really alert, could have probably taken second base on that throw. Maybe Johnson is coming out. And that means only one thing right now. Davy rarely ever comes out of the dugout without. And Gooden with the fake to third and looking at first to no avail as usual. We have actually seen that play work once this year, which is shocking in itself. Yes, that was an upset. Another Lord Charles for strike one. The curveball is still working. That's for sure. Thompson has been red hot since July 1st. He has hit 390. James have certainly been very positive. I don't. I don't think you can say surprises for the Phillies, but they certainly are pleased to see those two young guys develop at the plate as well as they have. And again, Samuel draws the throw. Sammy stole his 30th base of the year in the first inning. Gross at third and Samuel at first, two out. A line drive foul outside the left field line. That curveball missing a little high. So it's a full count, three and two. Now Samuel will be off with the pitch again. Gary Carter reminding Dwight Gooden of that fact. The curveball is high, and again, the bases are loaded. Dwight Gooden has walked three in the inning. One of those was intentional, but it was on a 3-0 count, and Dwight is going to be finished for the evening as Davey Johnson is out again. Hayes drove in the Phillies' first run in the first inning. He's one for three. And a fastball for strike one. Randy what? Myers has been impressive lately. He certainly throw because he had an account. Strike two. Looked like a little cut fastball, a little tight slider. No balls, two strikes. Just low, one and two. Fouled off. Somebody right ratio, 10 Ks. But he did struggle. In the seventh. And that was a really tough pitch that Von Hayes fouled off right there. One ball, two strikes. He is really spread out now. Widest stands in the big leagues today. Fouls another one off. 
Check swing roller. Hernandez is there. Myers racing to the bag. Gets there ahead of Hayes to retire the side. Good hustling play by Randy Myers. Third Avenue, New York. <laughs> Keith is one for two plus a walk. He singled back in the first inning. And he takes down low ball one. Hernandez has hit in 40 of the last 44 games, hitting about 340 during that period of time. He is now just seven hits away from 2,000 for his career. Fastball, a strike on the inside corner, one and one. And leaving as the winning pitcher at the moment. Fouled back, and the count still one and two. 76 games so far this year. <laughs> it doesn't appear too often. Inside to Hernandez, two and two. That is number one in the league. I think to call. I think he's about fourth or fifth, Steve. Is he? Lifetime. I think he's fifth lifetime right now. Fouled off, and the count still. Full count. You can see the club. Checking his chart down there on the bench. All four. Hernandez walks for the second time in the ball game, and he is aboard the, the Mets tying run, the first run New York scored in the fifth inning with a base hit to center field. The Mets then took a two to one lead in the sixth, only to see Philadelphia. Retake the lead with three runs in the seventh. Inside, one and one. Calhoun used to be with the Houston Astros. They were always struggling to get that left-handed reliever. Calhoun did not fill a bill, but he has certainly been given an opportunity in Philadelphia. Ripped up the middle for another base hit. Hernandez going hard will hold at second as Thompson gets to the ball in a hurry. Darrell with his third hit of the night, and the Mets have the runners at first and second with nobody out here in the seventh. And Darrell Strawberry staying right in there on that breaking ball. It's it back through the middle again. And Keith Hernandez makes a wise decision here to stop. The Mets down by two, but they have two on with nobody out. McReynolds has doubled and scored in three trips. And he takes the strike. Total crowd here, 46,835. Even though the game is sold out, they of course only count those who show up. And those who paid, 45,699. One strike to count. the middle. Jelts to Samuel and a double play. It's Aguayo at shortstop and not Jelts. Samuel turning it nicely to first base and on the Carter single to right field his last time up one of the few times Gary has gone the other way. This is the slider for strike one. Philly Bull they are 54 and two. So they haven't given up too many leads. The Mets have a, a tough road ahead of them right now. Punch to right field. Wilson going back. Makes the catch just short of the warning crack. And the inning is over. So Tacoby comes in and puts out the fire, even though... And Leach immediately falling down. If you remember... Back in the Astrodome about a month ago, Leach had that, oh boy, Alan Ashby hit Terry on the right knee with a one-hopper back through the box. 
it actually chipped part of that cartilage. He could face surgery at the end of the year. I guess you're always aware of that weak right knee of Terry Leach. Another slider fouled away. So it's one and one to Mike Schmidt. Steve, Bed Steve Bedrosian rarely comes in a ball game in the eighth inning. Never in the seventh, rarely in the eighth. It's usually reserved for the ninth inning. He will work an occasional two innings. Wow. Got to wonder about the mound now. Yep, Terry is trying to rake out some of that. His right knee might be bothering you. In fact, Davey Johnson and assistant trainer Bob Sykes are coming out. The way Terry delivers the ball, he puts some additional strain on that knee because he sort of moves his body toward third base and really shifts almost all his weight out over that knee in a much more awkward fashion than a more conventional pitcher's delivery. Well, I have one question. If, if he's fallen two out of the first three pitches delivered to Schmidt, why didn't he fall when he warmed up? <laughs> yeah, he threw ten pitches warming up and he didn't. He didn't fall down. Well, maybe, the, you know, a lot of times there's a hole that gets worked in there differently from, from each pitcher. There have been a couple of left-handers in the game, too, who would land in a little different spot. Maybe he just hit the edge of a, of a foothole there a couple of times. But you're right, Tim, and the major concern is when you see that, that knee, and that's why Davey was out in a hurry. Schmidt fouls back another slider. Still one and two. Well, the Blue Jays and the Yankees winning in the National League or the American League East, and the Tigers appear to be safely in command at the top of the ninth, leading 11 to three. Toronto in first place in the American League East, and the Tigers a half game back. The Yankees five back, and the Brewers eight back. Here at Shea, four to two. Phillies top of the eighth. Fastball hit to right field. Daryl Strawberry there, and he makes the play. So Schmidt, who had started the swing and a miss, and Parrish missed that ball by about a parish. 0-1. <laughs> Even outside of Louisiana. Of course, the parishes in Louisiana used to denote county-like areas as opposed to Catholic neighborhoods. Right. Swing and a miss, so you would think that Leach and Carter will go right back out there since Parrish has shown, shown no signs of adjusting. Leach almost slipped and fell again and was able to regain his balance. If history holds true, I think we're going to see a different Lance Parrish next season. National League. I think that's a good thought. Just got a piece of this one. We're still 0-2. It's not an easy adjustment for any player to make. And earlier this season, Timmy, you brought out what I think is the most important point. And that is the fact that as a catcher, when you change leagues, you have about 10 times more things to worry about than any other position player. Well, it's something that owners really should take into consideration. I guess they do. I'm sure of that. Another slider, and he hits it off the end of the bat. Not only does he have to worry about the opposing pitchers as far as hitters' weaknesses are easily found out, and most, most hitters know that everybody knows that. You know whether a guy's a low ball hitter, an inside hitter, an off-speed hitter, or something. But it's happened so often with players who have changed leagues that even though they struggle initially, if they are players of quality, and Lance Parrish has shown himself to be a player of quality throughout his career, that second year, after they've gotten their feet on the ground, they can really take off. Got him with a slider. Strikeout number one for Terry Leach, and with two out and nobody on, Glenn Wilson's the batter. And coming to the play, right field. Now Leach just sort of kept tantalizing that outside corner. And finally, that pitch got the job done.
Olsen on the evening. One for three. He struck out a couple of times. And he had an infield hit back in the fifth. Four to two, Philadelphia. Well hit deep to left field. Back is McReynolds, and this ball is out of here. So Glenn Wilson with a solo home run, his 13th of the year, makes it 5-2 to two, Philadelphia. At the plate, left fielder. Wilson now at 51 Hughes. RBIs. And he got all of it. fat part of the plate and hammered to the empty well almost a couple guys out there left center field bleachers outside to Keith Hughes though so Glenn Wilson hitting the hanging slider didn't hang for long fly ball left field Kevin McReynolds is there but the Phillies score another run on the 13th homer of the year by Glenn Wilson it's five to two Philadelphia ahead of the Mets, middle of the eighth. We're back after this from American Express. Swing and a miss. That ball went down. 0-1. Oh you don't see that type of movement from Bedrosian often. Oh, down and away to a left-handed hitter. As Artie Johnson on Laugh-In used to say, very interesting. There's the high rider. It's one and one to Johnson. Five to two. Philadelphia on top of the Mets. Try to introduce a minor change occasionally. But when you get right down to it, you're going to see a fastball from this guy. He's going to have that. That type of movement. Over for Keith, Keith Hughes in left field. You remember Sammy, don't you? Popped up. And Parrish is back. And he makes the play. Jumpers, Rompers. Number 29, Dave Magadan. Magadan, as you see, hitting 325. Two homers and 19 RBIs. And Dave has not had nearly that much success as a pinch hitter. He's 5 for 25 with a homer and two RBIs. So Dave hitting for Rafael Santana, and Lynn Dykstra moves into the on-deck circle to pinch hit for the pitcher, Terry Leach. Dwight Gooden started the game. He was very strong. He struck out 10, walked three, but the Phillies reached him for four runs and six and two-thirds innings. Strike one to Magadan, one and one. Well, the Astros are leading San Francisco three to two in the top of the eighth inning. Kevin Mitchell has homered for San Francisco and Glenn Davis for Houston. Rip to right field, way back. This ball is out of here. Home run number three for Dave Magadan, and it's now a five to three ball game. That'll bring them to, to their feet. Dave Magadan's second pinch hit home run. And the first one way back near the beginning of the season. This pitch down and in. Just ripping it. Only the tenth home run Bedrosian has allowed. And boy, that one was one of those no doubt about it jobs. Here's Lynn Dykstra to pitch hit for Terry Leach with one out and none on. Ground ball, right side, Samuel to Hayes to get Dykstra. Two outs. Lee Mazzilli now out to pinch hit for Tim Tuffle. One and one. 
and to Mookie Wilson. Foul away, one and two. Tomorrow, both teams have an off day. Why don't they just reschedule it for Thursday? Give the team a a night off. That has been done many, many times before, of course. Frank Cash and Al Harrison would be in charge of that, but the sky's kind of cleared up today, and it's turned into a beautiful evening. It also would have provided the Mets with some headaches they'd rather not have because of the sellout crowd, the fireworks. Today. Yep. Got him on strike. So Wilson is down on strikes. Strikeout number one for Bedrosian. Dave Maganin pulls the Mets one run closer, but it's still five to three after eight. Ball one. And a strike over the outside corner, one and one. And again, Bob Davidson giving the pitchers that borderline outside pitch. He's been doing it all evening. Foul off, one and two. And if you do it all evening, there's nothing wrong with that. At least you're consistent. And Aguayo used to be consistent in calling me the Spanish term vejito. He used to arrive early at the ballpark with Julio Franco, who's now the shortstop for the Indians. Strike three. Franco used to call me Bejito, and I thought, what a tender, sentimental term for one to have for an older player in the game. As you see the slider get Luis, and I come to find out that the term means old man. <laughs> it took me a month to find that out, so it was not nearly as endearing as I had thought. <laughs> After you found out, yeah. you probably wished you yeah. hadn't found they out. Would, they would both smile and say, Bejito. They'd smile. <laughs> I'd say, oh, that's really nice. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. James hits it well to center field. Dykstra breaks back and makes the play to the way. Well, the Mets urge all fans planning to attend any of the Mets home games September 8th and 9th or the 11th, 12th, and 13th this weekend to take a train to the game, if you will. Due to scheduling conflicts with the U.S. Open, take either the Long Island Railroad or the Flushing IRT number 7 line out to Shea. It'll be faster and more convenient for everyone. With two out and nobody on, here's Juan Samuel, who has a big base hit in this ball game, a two-run single with two out in the seventh inning. And he takes a strike. You're watching Mets Baseball 87 on WWOR-TV, Secaucus, New Jersey. Doug's had as good a slider as I've seen him have in some time. Those are nasty sliders. Late breaker. Yeah. An ideal position. Two out and nobody on. Ninth inning. In the dirt. Carter went out to get it and got an eye full of dirt instead of the ball. So it's one ball, two strikes. See, Gary had that dust pop right up in the eye. I was talking to Howard Johnson about that play in Los Angeles yesterday. It was in the papers here in New York. And Hojo had something in his eye. And he said that he had asked third base umpire Paul Runge if possibly the black stuff they used for the glare to cut down on the glare was in his eyes. Runge couldn't see any, but then he made the good play and then threw the ball away in the bottom of the 16th yesterday. Slow roller in front of the mound. Sisk off in a hurry and a good, strong throw to get the speedy one sound well in the inning. So a good, strong inning for Doug Sisk, who retires the Phillies in order in the ninth. And we go to the bottom of the ninth here at Chip. And there is Keith on deck. Strike one, one and one. Don't be surprised if Wally tries to bunt. He bunted with two strikes yesterday. In the 13th inning against Brian Holton, it was successful. Likes to bunt in these situations. 
Swinging away here and a base hit to center field. That's only Backman's second pinch hit in 12 at bats this season. And he leads off the ninth inning and brings the tying run to the plate. A lot of times when hitters step up there for the first time of the day and they hit a line drive somewhere, whether it's batting practice or not, one of their sayings is right out of bed. Well, for Backman, this might be literal because all of the Mets showing up and dressing at 6.30 tonight, whether the weather was all right or not, they were going to not take batting practice. Wally, of course, involved in a minor traffic accident. He was examined and released from the hospital and certainly showed no ill effects there. I'll say. Which is what you might call double good news for the Mets. Keith Hernandez has had a base hit, walked twice, and grounded out. He's one for two. Backman draws the throw. center and right center and that's what kind of hitter Hernandez is. A strike and it's 0 and 2. And Bedrosian worried about Backman. They're playing this inning like they have a one run lead and they've got a two run lead. Did Keith hold up? Yes, says Terry Tatum. Two balls, two strikes. Keith is so quick, he barely held up. But in fairness, he went as far as Glenn Wilson did in the seventh inning, in my opinion. I think you're right. I disagreed with Rusty at the time. That I didn't think he went far enough to have it called. So the Phillies have a legitimate gripe. Two and two. Hernandez represents the tying run. Foul. And Bunchy really around toward left field. Fouled off at the plate and the count still two and four. Full hitter. Another 2 2 pitch. And it's high. I'd send the run on a strike out, or at least that's what you have to consider. I mean, the, odds, the odds are against Yeah, them. right. Backman is running. And it's ball four. has walked three times on the night. And now the winning run is at the plate as Daryl Strawberry stands in with runners at first and second and nobody out. Strawberry three for four. And a standing ovation. right now got second base open now it's being cleared strawberry just misses this ball it's in his zone but he hits it right down off the end of the bat good swing he just misses ending this ball game and having the fireworks show start a little earlier number 25 Keith Miller is into the game to pinch run for Keith Hernandez. See, if it's first and second, you don't worry about a pinch runner. But you're going to use speed. Keith Miller can't hit, and he can't feel, but he flat can run. And he is in there to do just that with Kevin McReynolds, the batter. Kevin is one for four. Popped up and playable. Von Hay is calling for it and makes the catch two away. Keith Miller, it's the only guy you worry about. Now time being called again. The 
Luis Aguayo, the shortstop, checking with second base umpire Jerry Crawford about something. Now we're ready to go. Two out, two on, bottom of the ninth. The Mets down by two, and Miller draws the throw. Calling for it. Aguayo there, and Aguayo makes the catch. The Mets had their chances and left a lot of men on in this ball game as the Phillies came back in the seventh inning, scoring three runs and eventually holding on to win it five to three. And the Mets will remain three and a half games behind the St. Louis Cardinals, who were defeated by Montreal. The Expos now four back. Steve Bedrosian with his league leading 36th save of the year. And Don Carmen, who pitched six innings, winds up as the winning pitcher for Philadelphia. The loser, Dwight Gooden, only his fifth loss of the year. Dwight now 13 and 5. Tim and I'll be back to wrap it up. And of course, Ralph will be along with Kiner's Corner, all the scores for you, as well as the highlights. So stay with us. The final again, Philadelphia 5 and the New York Mets 3. We're back after this for Budweiser. Steve Zabriskie and Tim McCarver back at Shea where the Phillies have won the opener of this series 5-3 to three, and Dwight Gooden has suffered his fifth loss of the year even though he pitched very well and was cruising into the seventh inning. He ran into some problems and it seemed like Tim he lost his rhythm. He walked a couple of guys and, and it just the wheels came off for him. It seems uh, uh, rather strange about a power pitcher. It seems like whenever he slows down it seems like he, they're always in trouble. Not so necessarily with with other pitchers you notice Bedrosian in the ninth inning when he got in trouble things almost uh, become by the numbers and that's uh, what it appeared that Dwight Gooden was doing in the seventh inning.